بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے آر ٹاپک نیم از اپلیکیشن دا لینئر فنکشن اٹس اپلیکیشن اینڈ اٹس یوز ان دا اکنامکس اینڈ اینڈ سوشل لائف سو اینڈ دس از آر لیکچر نمبر سکسٹین ہیئر آئی اسٹارٹ ایکسرسائز نمبر فائیو پوائنٹ ٹو پیج ون نائنٹی ون دا کوشچن نمبر ون از A piece of machinery is purchased for dollar eighty thousand. Accountants have decided to use a straight line depreciation method, with the machine being fully fully depreciated after six years. Letting V equals the book value of the machine and T is the age of the machine. Here you see that in the statement, uh, a piece of machinery is purchased for dollar eighty thousand, and accountants have decided to use a straight line depreciation method. As you are the students of uh, uh, business, and you uh, learn uh, in your accounting books, there are several methods used to calculate the depreciation. Uh, here, uh, in which uh, in these methods are. a uh, straight line method double declining method uh, output method uh, and uh, in this way some other methods also there so uh, accountants have decided to use the straight line depreciation why they use the straight line depreciation method here because uh, it deal in a, a linear way uh, or the or you say that uh, its depreciation calculated year to year Uh, in a fixed form in a fixed form so uh, now we move towards uh, the question here uh, he also states that assuming no solvage value you also know that what is meant by the solvage value or uh, it is also called the scrap value the remaining uh, value of the asset uh, now we move towards the solution here First of all, the purchase value of the machinery that is equal to dollar eighty thousand, and uh, the solvent value is equal to zero, and the total life of the uh, machinery is six years. So we calculate the depreciation in this way: book value minus solvent value divided by the total life. This is the formula that is used to calculate the depreciation of any asset. Depreciation of the any asset: book value. Minus solvent value or scrap value divided by total life. Here you substitute their respective values. Uh, what is the total value of the book? Uh, so, sorry, uh, what is the total book value of the machinery? That is eighty thousand dollar minus solvent value is zero and divided by the total life. That is total life is equal to six. When you divide this, you get thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty three. Thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty three. this is the value of this machinery which is uh, depreciate every year with a constant rate the machinery the value of the machinery depreciate every year with this constant value so here the required mathematical function our basic aim how we can uh, develop a mathematical function through which we uh, calculate uh, the depreciation over and over in the uh, coming years which calculate the depreciation over the years using straight line method v is equal to f of t here the function is represented as book value minus depreciation multiplied by time why i multiply time with the depreciation because depreciation calculates each year depreciation calculate each year uh, up to 6 years V is equal to f of t is equal to eighty thousand minus thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty-three into t. If you see uh, the depreciation value in the initial year, then you substitute t is equal to zero. Then you see there is no depreciation in the initial value. You get on uh, again the total value of the asset that is eighty thousand. If you get the value of the asset after one year, then you substitute here t is equal to one. Then eighty thousand minus thirteen thousand three hundred and three, you get the value of the asset after one year. In this way, you um, find the value of the asset in the coming years. 
so now we move towards question number 2 that is uh, depreciation is estimated by using the straight line method depreciation is estimated by using the straight line method suppose that a truck cost dollar 20000 and can be resold for dollar 2500 at the end of 5 years at the end of 5 year then annual depreciation is calculated in this way so depreciation is equal to purchase cost minus solvage value divided by the total life here you see that uh, the purchase cost total purchase cost is equal to 20000 minus the solvage value is equal to 2500 divided by the total life that is 5 when you subtract 20000 minus uh, when the when you subtract 2500 from 20000 and then the remaining you divide by 5 you get 3500 this is the value of the depreciation which is calculated every year this is the value of the depreciation which we use uh, every year as a depreciation so mathematical uh, function expressing the book value v as a function of t as v is equal to f of t is equal to 20000 minus 3500 into t now uh, one more thing he asked calculate the function v in which the solvage value is dollar 7500 at the end of 6 years other things remaining same other things remaining same so uh, this formula becomes depreciation is equal to purchase value minus solvage value divided by total life here the purchased value that is 20000 minus solvage value is equal to 7500 divided by the total life 6 and after simplification we get 20, uh, 2083 2083 now uh, this value is estimated as a as a depreciation value which is uh, uh, calculate every year uh, mathematical function expressing the book value v as a function of t so v is equal to f of t is equal to 20,000 minus 20,083 into t how you will uh, understand this question these questions are very easy and uh, you learn in your uh, what I say uh, in your uh, normal uh, accounting cl classes now question number three a piece of machinery a piece of machinery is purchased for dollar thirty thousand accountants have decided to use the straight line depreciation method straight line depreciation method with the machine being fully depreciated after eight years determine v is equal to f of t assuming there is no solvage value there is uh, one question arise why we are not using the other methods of depreciation here regarding straight line method to calculate the depreciation why we are not using the other depreciation methods here why we are using only straight line method why because uh, we are why, why we are not using the other method because uh, if you see a uh, double declining method in which uh, uh, the depreciation calculated in the initial years by, uh, because machinery is new and uh, has the capacity to produce more and more output and initially in that method uh, uh, we calculate m uh, uh, more value of depreciation in the initially and as uh, you know with the passage of time it, its output goes to decrease so its depreciation value also goes to decrease uh, because it, it, it does not remain constant so that's why we are not using that method so uh, why we are using straight line method because each year it remains constant we have to calculate uh, a fixed amount of uh, fixed amount as a depreciation each year so in this way it becomes uh, a linear function so linear functions definition is same uh, in which uh, slope of increase or slope of decrease remains constant that is the reason uh, that we are we are using straight line depreciation method here 
so v is equal to f of t assuming there is no solvage value here we see its solution that purchase value is equal to dollar thirty thousand solvage value is equal to zero dollar and uh, total life is equal to eight shares so in this way the depreciation is equal to purchase value minus solvage value divided by the total life so, so when i substitute the respective value of the purchase value solvage value and the total life and after simplification we get um, it deduct as a depreciation each year three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollar he deduct from the um, uh, purchase value of the asset each year he deduct three thousand the, or the value of the um, asset goes down each year by three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollar now we see uh, the required function representing v as a function of t so v is equal to f of t is equal to the total value minus 3750t so you also see that uh, this form of the function representing a slope intercept form is a slope intercept form and uh, this these functions you also uh, studied in chapter number 2 such type of function uh, there in chapter number 2 and that how we can calculate the total value or the depreciated value or something as uh, so uh, this is a uh, this is the form of a uh, slope intercept form here slope shows that 3750 and its sign is negative so it this shows that it goes down the value goes down or deduct from the um, total value of the asset <coughs> If there is a uh, there is an appreciated uh, if we have to calculate the value of an appreciated uh, asset then what kind of function this is so we write it as v is equal to 30,000 plus 3750 then it shows the net positive sign shows that each year this value increases in the total value the total value increase by this amount each year so question number seven is two points on a linear demand function are dollar twenty against its value is eighty thousand and dollar thirty and its value is sixty two thousand five hundred. If you see here, what kind of expression you see, uh, what kind of conclusion you made uh, from these points? Uh, for a comparison, uh, we need two points. First, in this question, uh, in, in this uh, uh, point, you see here when the value of uh, a thing is twenty dollar, its demand is eighty thousand. Uh, how you can, or you say, how you can say it is a question of demand and supply? It's a question of demand and supply. If you see here, at dollar twenty, it is eighty thousand, and dollar thirty, it is sixty two thousand five hundred. So you can easily uh, conclude that this is a question of demand and you know what are the basics of a demand function is at lower value the demand is higher if the, and the greater value the demand is low. So you see here uh, at dollar 20 when, uh, when its price is 20 dollars so you see its demand is 80,000 and now you see when its uh, uh, price increase from 20 to 30 its demands goes to goes down to 62,500 so you easily uh, get access uh, from the given information either it is a supply question or a demand question uh, a cost function whatever it is so question uh, part a is determine the demand function q is equal to f of p determine the demand function q is equal to f of p here the demand Q uh, demand is represented by Q and it's it is based on P it is a price function so you see here given points are I'm na I named it because uh, uh, the first pair is uh, representing the price and the second pair representing the demand so I am writing here P1 Q1 P1 representing the first price and Q1 representing the first demand here dollar twenty and eighty thousand 
then P2 Q2 Q2 it is equal to dollar thirty, and against it the demand is sixty two thousand five hundred. Now we have two points, and we also uh, learn that in chapter number two that uh, how we can uh, generate a linear function by using two points. So by using by two points form. Q minus Q1 divided by Q2 minus Q1 is equal to P minus P1 divided by P2 minus P1. Uh, as you see there, Y minus Y1 divided by Y2 minus Y1 is equal to uh, X minus X1 divided by X2 minus X1. In that respect, I am writing here in this form. The place of Y you write Q, and at the place of X you write P. P shows the uh, independent variable and q shows the dependent variable because demand depends on the price so you know you substitute their respective values q minus here you see that q1 is equal to 80000 here you see that q is equal to 80000 q1 is equal to 80000 so i substitute the value of q1 80000 divided by q2 q2 you see here q2 is equal to you see here this q2 is equal to 62500 here i am directing him here you see that q2 is equal to <coughs> 500 Q2 is sorry 62,500 and then minus Q1 is equal to 80,000 is equal to P minus P1. Here you see uh, the value of P1 is equal to P1 is equal to this is P1. P1 is equal to dollar 20 so I am writing here. P1 is equal to 20, then P2 is equal to, you see here, 30. I am writing here 30 minus 20. So, uh, after simplification, we get Q minus 80,000 divided by, when you subtract 62,500 from uh, 80,000, you get minus 17,500 is equal to P minus 20 divided by 10. After cross multiplication, Q minus 80,000 is equal to P minus 20 divided by 10 multiplied by minus 17,500. After simplification, I get Q minus 80,000 is equal to P minus 20 into minus 1750. On multiplication, we get Q minus 80,000 is equal to minus 1750 P plus 35,000. And when I take this 80,000 towards right, uh, this function gets the shape. Q is equal to minus 17, 000, uh, 1750 uh, P plus 35,000 plus 80,000. This is equal to Q is equal to minus 1750 P plus 115000. This is our uh, function form of the uh, demand function. So, Now we move towards part number B. Uh, part number B is determine what price would result in demand of 50,000 units. Determine what price would result in demand of 50,000 units. Clearly he is stated here, <coughs> if the demand of 50,000 units at what price uh, this results uh, comes, to true, comes true. So you substitute Q is equal to 50,000 in equation number 1, we get 50,000 is equal to minus 1750P plus 115000. When I simplify this, I get minus 65,000 is equal to minus 1750P and when I divide it by minus 1750P is equal to 37.14. If the price is 37.14, then he is able to uh, demand, he, he, he demand 50,000 units at this price at this price uh, the purchaser gives a demand for 50,000 units the price of each unit will be charged dollar 37.14 if the demand is 50,000 now move towards part C interpret the slope of the function 
इंटरप्रेट द स्लोप ऑफ द फंक्शन उसी बाय क्वेश्चन नंबर वन क्यू इज इक्वल टू माइनस सेवनटीन फिफ्टी पी प्लस डबल वन फाइव ट्रिपल जीरो कंपेयर इट विद क्यू इज इक्वल टू एम पी प्लस सी इट इज द जनरल फॉर्म ऑफ द स्लोप इंटरसेप्ट फॉर्म इट इज द जनरल फॉर्म ऑफ स्लोप इंटरसेप्ट फॉर्म एट यू सी दैट वेन यू कंपेयर दिस एम इज इक्वल टू माइनस सेवनटीन दिस वैल्यू ऑफ एम एग्जिबिट But this value of M is showing here. This shows that if the price decreases against each unit, <coughs> if the price decreases each unit by minus seventeen fifty, then demand goes on increase. Demand goes on. Sorry, uh, if uh, if the price increases. against uh, each unit by this amount then uh, demand goes to decrease demand goes to decrease this shows the decrement in the price this shows decrement in the price and uh, similarly in part d uh, define the restricted domain and the range of the function here p define the domain and q define the range to so find the value of the restricted domain put q is equal to 0 q is equal to minus 1750p plus 115300 here you substitute q is equal to 0 to find the domain of p uh, so minus 1750p is equal to 115300 it is written as 17, 1750p is equal to 115300 so p is equal to 65 Hundred uh, sorry, sixty-five point seven one. So the range of p, the range of so the domain of p, p lies from zero to sixty-five point seven one. It is the limit of price. Price remains in this limit, greater than zero but less than greater than and equal to zero and less than and equal to sixty-five point seven one. And uh, now we move the value of the restricted range is by putting p is equal to zero, q is equal to minus seventeen fifty zero is plus double one five triple zero, q is equal to double one five triple zero, and demand uh, is uh, the range of the demand is from z <coughs> from zero to double one five triple zero. Now we move toward question number nine. Here two points on a linear supply function are. Dollar <clears throat> four against its value is twenty eight thousand and dollar six. The value is six point five zero. Its value is fifty five thousand. Now, if you see these two points, now what kind of guess you made? Uh, what kind of function it is? You see here at four when its price is four. The, uh, the uh, its requirement is twenty eight thousand, and when price is six point five zero, when the price goes on by two point five zero units uh, dollars, its value become that uh, requirement becomes fifty five thousand. So by using by judging this information, we see here uh, it is a supply function because supplier is interested at the high price. Supplier is. Supplier is interested to uh, produce more and more units at higher price. So you uh, uh, get information from these given points. The function is uh, the supply function. So we move towards part A. Determine the supply function. Determine the supply function. Q is equal to f of p. Given points p1, q1 is equal to. Dollar four against twenty eight thousand p two q two dollar six point five zero against fifty five thousand. So again, using the two points formula, q minus q one divided by q two minus q one is equal to p minus p one divided by p two minus p one. Q minus twenty eight thousand. I am writing here the value of q one. You see here, this is our q one. And this is our P one. 
and here this is our q2 and here we have p2 now i'm substituting their respective values q minus q1 you see here q1 is equal to 28000 i'm writing at the place of q1 28000 then q2 is equal to 55000 i'm writing 55000 55000 minus 28000 is equal to p minus p1 p1 is equal to 4 p2 minus p1 that is uh, p2 is 6.50 6 minus 4 when we simplify this q minus 28000 divided by uh, the difference between 55000 and 28000 it is equal to 27000 p minus 4 divided by 2.50 when i cross multiply it uh, it is equal to q minus 28000 is equal to p minus 4 divided by 2.50 multiplied by 28000 when i divide 28 uh, sorry 27000 27000 divided by 2.50 i get 10800 <clears throat> when i multiply this 10800 with p and 4 i get 10800p minus 43200 and uh, after simplification when i get 28000 towards right this is equal to q is equal to 10800p minus 43200 plus 28000 i get q is equal to 10800p minus 15200 15000 200 <clears throat> what price would you uh, would result in supplier offering 45000 units what price would result in supplier offering 45000 units now you find the price uh, that a supplier uh, offers what price on 45000 units to find the price on which supplier offer a supply of 45000 units so you substitute q is equal to 45000 you write here 45,000 is equal to 10,800p minus 15,200 then 40, uh, 45,000 I take this 15,200 towards left it becomes positive 15,200 is equal to 10,800p and uh, when you add up these two we get 60,200 is equal to 10,800p when you find the value of p you divide 10,800 and you get the price of each unit per unit per unit price is 5 5.57 5 <clears throat> the supplier offer 5.57 unit per uh, uh, sorry 5.57 per unit price against uh, if, if uh, he order uh, 45000 units if he gets an order of 55000 units uh, and uh, he is agree that uh, he must pay uh, each uh, against each unit 5.57 dollars so this is the price so return uh, now in part c determine and interpret the meaning of p sorry determine and interpret the p intercept to find the p intercept put q is equal to 0 in q is equal to 10800 p minus 1500 to uh, 15200 and you get 0 is equal to 10800 p minus 1500 to uh, 15200 when i take this 1500 uh, 15200 towards left it becomes positive 15200 uh, 15, is equal to 10800 p when i get this price p is equal to 15200 divided by 10800 it is equal to 1.40 it is equal to 1.40 so p intercept is dollar 1.40 against q is equal to 0 this is the price for the supplier to enter the market this is a uh, this is the price for the supplier to enter the market the selling price must be greater than 1.40 this is the threshold value for a supplier to enter the market it is the basic step if you want to enter the market its first step is its price is equal to 1.40 at this minimum level then after this for selling its value must be greater than 1.40 otherwise it shows its break even point it shows its break even point for uh, for the sake of earning point of view its uh, value of 
uh, each unit greater than 1.40 hope uh, you will understand uh, what i am uh, teaching you here uh, inshallah taala we will meet uh, with our lecture number 17 uh, of the same exercise with some other applications of the linear function till then take care allah peace